Hello, this is Caleb with God's Loving Sacrifice Podcast, where we talk about the Word of God and how it helps us get through today's world. I hope you learn and grow as you listen. Today, let's talk about women. Let's talk about what God thinks about women. Psalms 31, 25 through 27 says, Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. You know, God made woman, and a lot of people seem to think that uh, because he made us second or second class citizens or that we're lesser than um, what a man was. Uh, but everything that God made when he made the world, he said was good. The one thing he didn't say was good was man being alone was not good. So he made a help meet for man. You know, the thing about that is the fact that is when you look at what it meant to be a help mate or a help meet is what it said. Um, It meant that women complete a man. It doesn't mean, means that women complete a man. They're not the same as a man, but they fit together in harmony. Their bodies are in harmony. The strengths that men have, women don't usually have. The personality strengths that women have, men don't have. That's why they meet in harmony. And God said it wasn't good that man be alone. That's That was his whole reason for, for creating woman. And 1 Corinthians 11, 11 through 12 says, Nevertheless, neither is man independent of woman, nor woman independent of man in the Lord. For as a woman came from man, even so man also comes through women, but all things are from God. So God didn't make women to be lesser than man. They made them to be a complement to the man, to work together, to fit, to be perfect unity. That's why it says you become one flesh. You can only be one flesh when you fit together in the way that a man and a woman fit together. Proverbs 31, 30 says, charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. And we should be praising God for making us a woman. You know, you think of all of the women that were in the Bible. You hear so much about women to be silent in church. Women aren't supposed to do this. Women aren't supposed to do that in the church. They can't usurp authority from a male. Well, when God ordains it, you're not usurping authority from anyone. Think about the women who were in the Bible that that God chose. There was Miriam. She was a prophet in Exodus. Um, She led the people in worship, and that was Exodus 15, 20. Then in Judges 4, 5, Deborah was chosen to lead the nation as a judge. She was a prophet. She was a warrior. Esther saved a nation. Huldah was a prophet in Kings, in Chronicles, Second Chronicles 34. Jesus saw significant value in women. Jesus taught the women. He told Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. That's John eleven twenty five. 25. He spoke to the, the Samaritan woman at the well. And it was this woman that he chose to spread his gospel. Not a man, a woman. She was a female evangelist. Women were present at the birth of Jesus. When he died on the cross, he was, they were the first one. Mary saw him after his resurrection. It was her that Jesus told to go tell the disciples what they were supposed to do. That 
is what God, that's what Jesus thinks of women. There is nothing second class about that. God loves women. God is giving opportunities to women to proclaim his gospel. And so many women are afraid to step out and do that. Maybe you don't be a pastor of a church, but that doesn't mean that you don't teach. Look at me. I'm doing this Bible study. I'm not usurping authority from anyone. It's something God led me to do. God gives me the words to speak to you. And if God lays this in your life and in your heart, when the Holy Spirit came, the Holy Spirit came to men and women. It wasn't just the the men who received the Holy Spirit. The women received it too. And they were given the same gifts that were given to the men. They had the gift of speaking. Why do we try to hide that now? Why do we look back on what Jesus did and only see a few scriptures? The scripture that says women be silent in church. If you do a little bit of research, you'll find out that this was written to the church of Ephesus. The women were sitting there, asked their husbands questions during the service, and they were told that they were supposed to be quiet and ask their husbands when they get home. I don't think a woman should get up in front of the church and take over and just boot everybody else out of the way and, hey, I'm going to be in charge. That's not the way you do it. You do what God leads you to do. And as long as you're doing what God leads you to do, then you're not usurping authority for anyone. There was many times when I was younger that I would get up and minister in our church. The pastor would ask me. And I did it. I loved it. I love speaking to people. I love teaching. Um, Why, as women, do we allow other people to take the things that God has given us away from us? They try to take our strengths away and try to make us act like we have the strengths that men have. We're made different. I don't care what anybody says. We're made different. A man could not carry a baby. God gave that strength and that power to a woman. We nurture our homes. We nurture our children. We are a helper to our husband. And being a helper does not mean that you're less than him. It means you're working alongside of him. You are helping him. There is nothing wrong with that. We're supposed to be, I think the word that kills most of the people are you're supposed to be submissive. And I think people take that word submissive to the wrong level. We aren't a dog that has to bow down to our husbands, but we look to him for guidance. We look to him as being the head of the home and the head of the of the faith in the home. But that doesn't mean we're to be browbeaten. We're just supposed to understand what his role is. And he has to understand what our role is. If you look at all the scriptures about husband and wives, it never once says women have to do this. Men don't have to do it. Everything that it says is, you know, women should love their husbands. Husbands should love their wives. You shouldn't turn down your husband. You shouldn't turn down your wife. I grew up in a church when I was three years old. I started going to church. My very first pastor was Sister Emmerts. She was a female pastor. But of course, the church that I went to when I was a little girl was started by Amy Simple McPherson, and she was a woman. And I have a whole different look on women in the Bible and as Christians that God made us strong. God gave us the attitude and the aptitude to be able to raise our children and show the world what God is. It says that the same thing about a husband, but a believing wife sanctifies her husband. Believing husband sanctifies his wife. But you know what? God put us here to do his will. 
not what other people tell you, not what some church comes up with. You need to be in prayer to him. You need to know what his will is for your life. But as a woman, remember, God loves you. God loves the strength that you have as a woman. God sees a special part of you that we don't ever see. And take that part and live for God and show other women how important they are in the family of God. I pray that you enjoyed today's episode. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave a message by contacting me on the website at www.godslovingsacrifice.com. And while you're there, you can catch up on all the other episodes, check out the reviews, and even read the blog. You can also leave a comment on Facebook at God's Loving Sacrifice. Thank you for spending time with us today. And until next time, may God richly bless and keep you.